What's up everyone? Welcome to another very exciting video. In this video, I will show you a presentation of a talk that I recently gave at Web at Quebec, which is one of the biggest tech events in Canada. In it, I will show you everything you need to know to be up on the latest with AI and creative tools. Now, this is going to be really good because as you can see here, the talk was extremely popular. In fact, the room was completely full and there was a line of people going all the way to the back of the building. The talk was so popular that the organizers of the event asked me to give it once again the next day which was the first in the history of the event so sit back and enjoy while you learn everything you need to know to be up on the latest with everything ai <music> I'm a principal designer at Osmo and I've previously worked at Google AI where I develop a lot of the ideas that I'm going to be presenting to you today. On this YouTube channel in 2017, I posted a video in which I talked about the intersection of AI and design. In that video, I made a few predictions, including the fact that AI was going to bring a sort of democratization of work, which is going to make highly technical work more accessible to more people. I've also predicted that people will have to learn to work in a team with AI and that rather than doing all of the work themselves, they will become a little bit more of a guide and they will be guiding the AI in the proper direction rather than doing all of the technical work. I've also predicted that AI was at risk of disrupting nearly 50% of their jobs by 2034, which is 11 years from today. In 2016, I posted yet another video where I predicted that AI was going to be the next step in the evolution of computing platforms after the touch screens, but before augmented and virtual reality. I also predicted that chatbots were going to become the next big computing platform on which people will be developing applications. And while I was a little bit off in terms of timing because I predicted that for 2017, today I'm pleasantly surprised to see that most of my predictions turned out to be surprisingly accurate. So what changed since the last time that I made those videos? Well, there's been a lot of developments in the world of AI. For example, we saw the arrival of transformers and reinforcement learning from human feedback but by far the biggest innovation has been the large language model. The way we develop those large language models is that we feed a ton of text to an agent. And through all of that text that we feed it, we teach it to predict what the next word will be. A lot of people, they try to minimize products like ChatGPT, saying that it's simply a stochastic parrot, which means that the only thing that it does is to predict the next word that's coming up depending on what input we gave it. And this is true, this is exactly how it works, but the big difference here is the quantity of the text that we fed to that AI agent. We trained it on pretty much all of the text we can find on the internet, and that includes all of the Wikipedia articles in every single languages, all of the books that have been scanned since the beginning of human history, as well as all of the newspapers, all of the tweets, and all of the Reddit posts. And now it's going to a point where companies like OpenAI are now transcribing YouTube videos because they are running out of high quality text to feed to that AI agent. So it's a huge amount of information as we feed it to the agent. It's going to develop what we call a neural network, which is exactly what you see here on the screen, but imagine billions and billions and billions of neurons, which is, if you think about it, very similar to the way that our brain brain works. So all of us, we have a bunch of neurons inside our brains that are going to fire up depending on what we see and what we're told. And this is going to bring us to do some action as a reaction to that input. So this is the same exact principle here, but replicated digitally. A product like ChatGPT is essentially a product that has been trained on all of humanity's information. It can also think at the speed of electricity, which is pretty much lighting speed. And through all of that information that we fed it, it starts to have have what we could consider to be reasoning skill. So this is the big innovation that made ChatGPT so incredibly popular in the recent days. Another big innovation that happened since then is that people realized that they could apply the same exact technique of training an AI to predict the next word to pretty much any other media you can imagine. So for example, if you take a look at the picture here and you think that every single pixel in that image is a word, then we can train an AI to predict what the next pixel will be and thus teach it to draw a character such as Mario Bros for example. 
And the same also applies to audio as well. So back then, when I first made those videos seven years ago, there was a lot of various specialties in the field of AI. But now we realize that we could apply the same very successful and popular technique, which are LLMs, to pretty much any of these fields and get incredible results. So now everybody's working on the same exact tech and the tech is extremely successful, which has brought upon us a literal explosion of AI tool. I don't know if you're on Twitter and you're trying to keep up with it, but it's absolutely overwhelming. It seems that every single day there's an announcement of a brand new AI tool that promises to revolutionize some part of some industry, and it's almost impossible to stay on top of all of it. So the goal of this presentation is to do an overview of the best AI tools on the market right now. And we'll also talk about upcoming tools and features. And finally, we'll talk about the impact that these are going to have on our society. So I will be presenting you a bunch of AI powered tool among four different dimensions. We'll talk about the tools that can help you edit text, images, audio, and then video. So let's start with the first one, which is the text in the world of word processing. By far, the most popular tool is ChatGPT. It's the king. It has barely no competition right now. And if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure that you use it already. It is by far the app that has grown the fastest in the history of tech. They went from zero to 1 million users in only five days and then to 100 million users in less than two months without any marketing. It was all word of mouth. So they completely beat Instagram and the iPhone and every other massively successful tech products in the history of the tech industry. You've probably also seen some of the news article mentioning how ChatGPT is now beating pretty much every single exam in the US. So for example, the bar to become a lawyer and also the general medicine exam to become a doctor. And it's crazy to see how fast it's evolving. You can see just from version 3.5 to 4, the one in green on the screen, it is now becoming the first of its class in every single subject you can imagine. ChatGPT is super helpful for a bunch of things. So it can help you write some text. It can explain some concepts to you. It can help you with brainstorming. It's also very good for formatting data. So this is one thing that not a lot of people know about, but you can ask it to give you a spreadsheet and then it can add a new column and change some of the data. It can also help you translate some stuff. It can teach you some concepts. You can talk with it. And finally, it can also help you with coding. So this is a very popular use case with engineers. I did ask a lot of my friends who are engineers and they all are now using ChatGPT to help them in their day to day work. And they're telling me that ChatGPT is making them between 20% faster to 20 times faster, depending on the type of project that they're working on. More recently, ChatGPT came out with plugins, which is a huge announcement. If you have the paid version of ChatGPT, you can enable plugins by going into your your settings menu and then to beta feature and then you can turn on web browsing and plugins which is going to allow you to use a bunch of additional apps inside of chat gpt so let me show you how that works so here you can select a bunch of applications in chat gpt itself such as for example wolfram alpha and then you can have it interact with that application so a lot of people complained that ChatGPT was very terrible with mathematics because it will sometimes dream up some new numbers and it was very poor at doing like addition and multiplications. But with the additional app of Wolfram Alpha, which is one of the best app in the field of mathematics, it is now supercharging ChatGPT and it is enabling it to become the best tool to do math. So right now I can promise you that every single big tech companies in Silicon Valley is absolutely rushing to build their own plugins for chat GPT. As I've mentioned, chat GPT is by far the fastest growing platform in the history of the tech industry. It's growing much faster than the iPhone back in the days. So everyone wants to make sure to have some visibility on that new platform. This is a huge moment in the tech industry, which is very comparable to back when Steve Jobs announced the app store for the iPhone. We have the iPhone 4, 5, 6, and now we have ChatGPT 4, 5, 6. The plugins is pretty much the equivalent of the app store for the iPhone. And you can imagine how big of an impact that app store had 
over society. How many new revolutionary companies it enabled? So I think we're going to see the same exact thing replicated with ChatGPT. ChatGPT also announced a new update which is coming up pretty soon and you can sign up to be on the waitlist by scanning the QR code in the top right corner of the screen. And this is basically called Code Interpreter. And let me show you a demo because this is absolutely mind blowing. So first off, you can use Code Interpreter to write any type of mathematic function or equation and then it can help you visualize that information on the screen and then you can have a conversation with it. You can zoom in on some of the data, you can change some of the data. So for everyone working in the field of data science, this is going to become an absolute must use. Another feature that's coming up, you'll be able to drag and drop a spreadsheet in ChatGPT and then you'll be able to have a discussion with it in order to, for example, extract some of the data and then modify it. So we're basically going towards a future where we no longer need to learn to use tools like Google Spreadsheet and Microsoft Excel and learn to do formulas in order to modify the data. Now we can do all of this very easily by just having a conversation with the chatbot. And finally, for my friends who are designers, you'll be able to drag and drop an image inside of ChatGPT, and then you'll be able to ask it to the size of the image or change the color or remove the background or turn it into a vector file. So pretty much every single things you will previously have done in Adobe Photoshop. Now you can just have a discussion in English with ChatGPT and get any type of transformation that you need. When ChatGPT came out, it also enabled a slew of other apps that have been built on top of it. There's a product called Jasper, which is essentially just a user interface in between you and ChatGPT. And it can help you write description for products on Amazon, write like advertising for Facebook or titles or script for your YouTube video. And the way it works is that they just give you a bunch of fields, as you can see here on the screen, and they take all of that information and then they give it to ChatGPT themselves along with the best prompt in order for you to get the best result possible. If you don't feel very comfortable using ChatGPT, you never know exactly how to ask for things, then you can use this, which is just an additional interface that gives you the best result possible. The way these products are built is absolutely fascinating. They add a script in between their products and ChatGPT. And that script essentially looks like this. You are Jasper, an AI marketing assistant. Your goal is to recommend the best YouTube video title. And then they just give it like a bunch of ideas on how to make the best YouTube video title. So it's a very simple product, yet, this is now worth $1.5 billion in valuation. So this just goes to show how big of an industry is now being built on top of chat GPT. To give you one more example, I personally have started to host people on Airbnb in Quebec, in Canada, but I've been living in the US for over 10 years. So whenever people ask me for recommendations of activities, I'm not really good at this. So I just forward the question to chat GPT. And by the way, if you're not sure what to use chat GPT for, ChatGPT has been trained on Google Map. It knows every single city in the world, every single train, every single airlines, every single restaurant. And it's very, very good at giving you the perfect itinerary for any trip that you might be planning. So if you have some vacation coming up this summer, I recommend that you give it a shot and you will be absolutely blown away by it. What we're doing with this is that I've partnered with Coiffaire à Québec, which is a big tourism website for the city of Quebec. And basically, we're going to be building a chatbot on that website built on top of ChatGPT that is going to help people figure out what types of activity they want to do. And the way we do this, once again, is by just adding a script in between ChatGPT and the website. And that script is going to look something like this. So you are an AI agent for the website. Your goal is to help our users figure out what they can do when they're visiting Quebec. You will start the conversation by asking them this and that question and so on. So this is super easy to build actually. And the big trend in this is that more and more apps will be increasingly programmed in English. So you won't need to learn all of those programming language in order to speak the language of the computers, you will be able to program any types of application at some point in the future by simply telling it exactly what you want in plain English. And in that same line of thinking, there's a brand new job that has just arrived on the market. This job didn't even exist 
two months ago. It is the job of a prompt engineer. A prompt engineer is someone who is specialized in asking the AI exactly what to do in order to get the best results possible. To do this job, you don't need a college degree and it pays upwards of $375,000 per year. So if you're watching this and you're not too sure what you want to do in the future for your career, I recommend that you check out platform.openai.com slash playground and that you start playing with this and I can guarantee you, you will be extremely in demand for the next five years and you will be making a lot of money because I think the job of prompt engineer is going to be the most in demand job in the world for the foreseeable future. Now in the world of images, by far my favorite tool and I think it might just be my favorite tool of all time is mid journey. I don't know if you've ever used Midjourney, but if not, I highly recommend that you scan the QR code in the top right corner of the screen because this is by far one of the best and the most exciting tools I have ever seen in my life. The way that it works is that it connects to Discord, which is a messaging platform, and then you can type backslash imagine and anything you can think of. So for example, Harry Potter in the style of Pixar 3D render and press enter and you will see that image materialize in front of your eyes eyes and the result looked like something like this, which is frankly just absolutely stunning. This looks like an image that was taken straight out of a Pixar movie. And this is just one style. Mid Journey can do any style you can think of. So for example, it could also be a Japanese painting of Harry Potter or even a tattoo art or any other type of image you can think of. Mid Journey is also extremely good with photography. So this is not a real photo. This is an image that was generated entirely with Mid Journey and you can feel the emotion in the picture and the reflection on the glass looks absolutely perfectly photorealistic. And the same goes, for example, for food photography. You could never tell that this is not a real photo of a real hamburger. So with Mid Journey, you can generate images in any style that you want instantly, infinitely, for 10 bucks a month, which is by far the best deal I have ever seen in my life. It's absolutely mind blowing that we have access to something like that for this cheap. And so with new tools like this, it really doesn't bode well for artists and photographers. For example, ever since this technology came out, there's been a bunch of new applications that have came out that are aiming to replace your photographer. And I have been developing one of these applications myself. It's called Firepick. You can see it right here. And the way it works is that you upload 30 photos of you. And then we will train an AI to understand your face and what you look like. And you will be able to instantly generate a bunch of new great looking pictures of you on demand. Here are some of the results that I got with this application. And as you can see, it is just as if you had a great photographer friend that you could just summon at any point to just take some great photos of you in pretty much any location that you can imagine. If you want to give this a shot, you can just scan the QR code in the top right corner of the screen. I would greatly appreciate if you can give me some feedback for that. Working along with a media agency in Canada, we've also started to look for ways we can use this technology to help other businesses, such as, for example, restaurants. You've probably been to restaurants where they didn't have great looking photos of their food on their menus. And that's because photo shoots tend to be very expensive for restaurants that might not have the money for it. So now you can imagine we could just ask the people who owns a restaurant. So now you can imagine we could just ask these people to just take a normal iPhone photos of their food and we will use AI to turn that photo into a much better professional looking version of it. Adobe has always been a huge player in the field of images. And recently they just announced Adobe Firefly, which is their brand new AI powered app. Firefly can generate images the same way that Midjourney can, but the thing with this one is that the images that have been used to train the AI have been ethically sourced. So if this is something that you care about, you should use Firefly instead of Midjourney. It's also pretty good at creating illustrated lettering for my designer friends, but by far one of the features that blew me the most away when I first saw it is this one where you can just turn any hand-drawn sketch into a fully editable vector logo instantly. And when I saw this, I was absolutely blown away because I saw pretty much all of my training as a graphic designer just melt away in front of my eyes because this took me years to learn how to do in Illustrator. And now anyone can pretty much do it instantly without any technical skills. 
Another great feature that they've announced is this one where you can just turn a mood board, which is basically a color palette with some image inspirations into a fully fleshed out graphic design. And then you can just click a few buttons to quickly edit and sample through the different images and text and fonts and so on. And the results are absolutely stunning. Another feature that came out just a few weeks ago is this one called selective generation. So imagine you have a picture of you where you really like the way you look, but you don't like the jacket that you have on. So you can just erase the jacket using the paintbrush and then write something like, I want a professional shirt and boom, you have a photo of you with that brand new shirt. Adobe just announced the same exact feature in Photoshop just a few weeks ago as well, and it absolutely blew up. Everybody's using it on TikTok and Twitter, and the results are absolutely amazing, as you can see here on the screen. So all of these new tools have brought up a lot of frictions between AI and artists. For example, there's a photographer called Boris Elgatson who participated in a huge photography competition sponsored by Sony. And he ended up winning the first place with this very cool, kind of creepy, kind of surreal, argentic photography. And when he won the first place, he immediately removed himself from the competition saying that this was not a real picture. It was an AI generated image made with mid journey. And he did all this to make a point which is that photography as a whole has been forever changed by AI and everyone needs to be aware of this now. Along the same lines, back in December, there was another digital art competition where some other guy also won the first place with an image that he generated with Mid Journey. And that made a lot of people angry because a lot of people spent a lot of time creating their art piece for the competition. Whereas that guy just sat down in front of a computer, wrote something, and in 30 seconds, he got the image that won the first place. Similarly, there's a website called ArtStation, which is a portfolio website for artists. And earlier this year, there's been a huge revolt against AI generated art. Once again, this is the same idea where a bunch of people spend their entire life developing a craft and a skill of making digital art. And then overnight, a bunch of random new people that have never done art before just showed up on the website and started posting the images that they made with Mid Journey. They were and the artists were absolutely pissed off and they made a huge revolution saying no to AI. One more anecdote, there was this guy on Twitter who was very clever and he used ChatGPT to write the script for a children's book and then he went into Mid Journey and generated a bunch of images, put it all together to create this children's book that he then tried to sell on Amazon. And when he announced this on Twitter saying, hey, look at this cool project that I made, I think it's interesting, the reaction on Twitter was absolutely vitriolic. People were absolutely pissed at him. They said that this was disgusting, that he didn't accomplish anything, that this was depressing, that this was insulting for the children who deserved better. I talked about this situation on my own TikTok channel and funny enough, the reaction on TikTok was the complete opposite. It was so much more positive. There was basically a bunch of kids and they were like, are you telling me that I can use AI to create an illustrated book in one weekend, even if I don't know how to draw? This is amazing. This is exciting. I can't wait to get my hands on this. So we're kind of like starting to see a little bit of a generational divide between the people who grew up before this technology and the people who are growing up with this technology. And these people are super excited to get their hands on it and try to do something creative with it. So what can we do about this whole controversy between artists versus AI? I think we can get some inspiration from the world of chess because since its very beginning, chess was being played between two human beings. At some point in the 1950s, computers started playing chess, but nobody took them seriously because they were not very good at it. And this was the case up until the very day in 1993, where for the first time in history, an AI computer managed to be the world champion of chess. And ever since that, 
no human player has been able to beat an AI computer at chess. And when this happened, a lot of people were saying that this is the end of chess. Nobody's going to want to play chess anymore. And if they do, they'll just want to watch computers play chess against each other because computers are so much better than the best human being at chess. Ultimately, this is the case today. You can watch computers play chess against each other. There's like a bunch of competitions of that. And they are fascinating because the computers play basically perfect games. But despite all of this, human chess competition remains by far the most popular form of chess in the world. And you could argue today that not only chess didn't die, but it is now more popular than ever before in the history of chess. And also the quality of the players is so much better than it was 20 years ago because people are now training with AI and this is helping them to get so much better. Now, when it comes to AI tools in the world of audio, I think the, by far the most interesting one is Eleven Labs. So I assume a lot of you probably haven't tried this one out. If you haven't, I recommend that you check it out using the QR code on the top right corner of the screen. And what this tool allows you to do is to clone anyone's voice and then you can just type something and it's going to create a narration of what you wrote in the voice of the person you just cloned. So let's have Joe Biden explain to you how you can use this tool to clone Joe Biden's voice. It's pretty easy to do, Joe. All you need is a one minute audio file of someone's voice. Just find any YouTube clip, paste the address in Y2 mate and download the MP3. Then go to 11 labs, click instant voice cloning and upload the file. Then click use, type anything you want, and there you go. You just got your custom voice clip. So it's that easy. It only takes 30 seconds. And now you have a voice clone of Joe Biden and you can make him say whatever you want. Here's a concrete use case for this technology. So I work for a game company where we have a bunch of characters and we already have recording of their voices. And we wanted to do additional recording so we could add more content in one of the game. So we went to an agency in order to do this and they wanted to charge us $10,000 for the voice recording. And we realized because we already had the voice of the character, we could simply clone it using Eleven Labs and we will go from paying $10,000 to only $5 for one month. So this is a savings of about 2000%, which is absolutely fantastic. I think in the world of business right now, there is a ton of opportunities like this where we can use this new technology to save a lot of money. So if you're getting familiar with these AI tools, I think you could be making a lot of money as a consultant by going into other businesses and finding ways to use these new tools in order to save money. One unfortunate problem with this technology is that it can be used for scams. So imagine you're at home and your daughter calls you and she says, mommy, daddy, someone just kidnapped me and they need $10,000. Otherwise, I don't know what is going to happen to me. This is something that is increasingly happening in the US, unfortunately. And as you can guess, the girl was not kidnapped. Basically, the scammers found a YouTube video of her and they were able to extract the voice and clone it and have her say, all of these things and then they find her phone number they called her home and they try to get some money from the parents using this ai scam this is something that is going to happen increasingly it's very important to be aware of that phenomenon and if you have a family to be prepared for what you will do in case something like this happen maybe you have a keyword like banana or something like that so you know you're talking to the right person another super interesting tool from adobe is called adobe podcast and you can use it using the qr code in in the top right corner this one you can drag and drop any audio file into the browser and click one button and it's going to transform that audio clip into a studio quality version of it so let me show you a demo where i recorded myself talking right next to a vacuum cleaner so this is the first clip Ceci est un test pour Adobe Podcast. and this is the ai edited version of it Ceci est un test pour Adobe Podcast. So you can hear that the voice is a little bit robotic because this is a very extreme use case. But for any other use case, it's doing a really good job right now and it's only going to get better over the years. I use it a lot personally whenever I make TikTok videos in order to improve my audio into a more studio quality version of it. So you could imagine in just a year or two from now, nobody will need to buy these kind of like expensive microphones like I have here. And everyone will just be able to record audio using their phone and have high quality studio 
audio from this. In the same way that I've previously explained that there's now a friction between AI and artists, we see the same phenomenon with AI and musicians. So you might have heard some of the AI edits of, for example, Kanye West singing a brand new song that is totally out of the style that he usually does, like Hater the Liar. So let's listen to this. This is a trending thing to do. It's very popular on TikTok. And in fact, there is a billboard for the most popular AI songs and you can access it using a QR code in the top right corner. If you want to create your own version of a song like this, you can use a website like musicfy.lol and you can just drag and drop an acapella version of a song and it will change it to the voice of anyone that you want. Then there's some other people who take the same idea and bring it a step further. For example, this guy on TikTok called Ghostwriter is an amazing musician. He's making some really good tracks, but he wanted to have some celebrities to sing on top of his track. He ended up using AI to clone Drake voice and The Weeknd and created this brand new music track that has never been heard before. Let's listen to it. So when this song came out, it made all of the first pages of every single news outlet because of how good it sounded. So many people were dumbfounded, they were sure that it was a brand new song from Drake. And it's also started to reach the top of the billboards on Spotify and TikTok and YouTube. Drake was absolutely furious at this and he used everything in his power to get the song banned on every single platform. So today it's very hard to find that song on YouTube and impossible to find on Spotify, unfortunately. So as this is happening, it's also interesting to see how other artists are reacting to this. So for example, Grimes, who is Elon Musk's ex-girlfriend, and she's also a musician, she essentially has the opposite approach where she says anyone can clone my voice and if you manage to make a successful song out of it that generates money i'm going to split the profits with you 50 50. so you can keep 50 percent of the profit and i will take a 50 percent tax because you've been using my voice so it's interesting to see that even in the world of music there's also a huge divide in the way that artists are approaching and embracing or rejecting that new technology and you could imagine at some point in the future you're going to have an app like spotify where you'll be able to pick a song to play and then you'll have a drop down and you'll be able to pick which artists that you want to listen to and this is going to be completely illegal and it's definitely not going to be spotify but i think this is going to be just another napster moment once again I'm another huge wave that is going to crash the music industry. Now in the world of video, by far the tool that I think is the best one on the market right now is called Runway ML. And you can try it by scanning the QR code in the top right corner of the screen. So Runway ML has a bunch of amazing AI powered features, such as for example, one click to erase something from the video, one click to turn it into a super slow motion, even though you film the video with just a basic normal camera. You also have one click to erase any background from your video, and then finally one click to animate any photo into a video. Another amazing feature that they have is called Style Transfer, where you can just film yourself at home in a normal setting and then give a prompt to the AI and it will transform that video. And look at the creativity here, how the brown page becomes a world map. It's going to unlock an incredible amount of creativity for anyone working with video. There's been an amazing project using this technology called Anime Rock Paper Scissor, where a bunch of people film themselves in front of green screen and then they use a similar technology to create a 30 minute long anime once again, when this project was shared on Twitter, the reaction from people was absolutely horrifying. People were saying that this was a disgrace, that this was insulting to the craft of animators. But at the same time, if you know how much work it takes to create an animated show like this one, it's like dozens and dozens of animators working for months and months on end just to create a 30 minute animated show. And with this type of technology, you can see how you can get so much more results so much faster with so much less effort. So so this is going to be an absolute game changer for the world of animation. Just recently, Runway ML has come out with another tool that is called 
text to video. And this one is exactly like mid journey where you can write any sentence of anything you can imagine and it's going to produce a video for you of what you just wrote. Using this, some people try to create what an AI would understand to be a beer commercial today with the current level of this technology. So let's watch it. So we're obviously very far from a perfect professional quality result. But when I look at results like this, I can't help but think of where Midjourney was about a year ago. Because Midjourney as a company is only one year old and this was what the images used to look like when it first came out one year ago. Basically the AI didn't have a good understanding of shapes and compositions and anatomy. But in less than a year we went from this to a perfectly photorealistic result. So when I look at this, I'm thinking we probably got a year or two left before we can just type anything we want and get a perfectly photorealistic result in terms of video as well. One thing that I think is very exciting in all of this is how you can start to mix all of the various tools that I've just shown you today in order to get very exciting results. So this is an example of a video that I made where I used a bunch of tools to generate a video from basically nothing with barely any work required. Let's watch it. This video was made entirely by AI and it only took a few minutes. The script was written by ChatGPT. The video was then edited by Pictory AI, an AI tool that can automatically select the best shots and put them together in a cohesive way. The character you see on screen and the voice you're hearing were both generated by Synthesia IO. Finally, the video was put together with Veed Studio, an AI-powered video editor that makes it easy to create and edit videos. With all these AI tools at our disposal, creating content is now easier than ever, and you don't even need to show your face. So this was just one example. Here's another one that was very popular on Twitter. This is what if Wes Anderson made the movie Harry Potter. So basically the way I created this is first, of course, I used ChatGPT to brainstorm the various characters I was going to showcase along with the backgrounds that would best represent them. Then I brought all of this into Midjourney where I spent a bunch of time crafting the perfect prompt to get exactly the type of result that I was looking for. I also used another product called Dall-E which is very similar to the new generative fill feature in Photoshop to edit some of the pictures so I could get exactly what I wanted. And finally I brought all of this into DID which is another great tool that can be used to animate the faces of characters or people in photos. Along the same lines, there's someone else who made a very similar video to the one that I just showed you, but this time it's Star Wars according to Wes Anderson. In a galaxy far, far away, prepare for a reboot like never before. This summer, Wes Anderson brings you a side of the Star Wars universe you've never seen before, the Galactic Menagerie. So previously I was talking about how eventually you could imagine that you could get an app or you could listen to any song that you like and have a drop down where you can pick up the artist that will sing that song for you. Well, you could imagine in the future, in five years from now, maybe we could get an app like Netflix where you could watch your favorite TV show played by your favorite actors and even shot in the style of your favorite cinematographer, basically on demand. That's probably not going to be legal either, but for sure there are people working on something like this right now and it's absolutely conceivable that in five years we get an app that lets you do this. In conclusion, as I was working on this presentation, I discovered a fascinating article that was written by a guy called Charlie Maggie, 
who was working as a software engineer back in 1993 for the CIA. And basically the CIA asked him to write up what he thought the future would look like. And this article is amazing because that guy made so many incredible predictions about the future. For example, he predicted the metaverse that Mark Zuckerberg is trying to build today and also the neural interface that Elon Musk is trying to build as well. And of course, he also talks about AI. And basically the point that he's trying to make is that throughout human history we've been through a bunch of different ages for example we had the age of agriculture and then we had the industrial age and at some point in the 1970s we had this computer revolution where we went into the information age and during that time we started to produce a lot of data you probably already heard some of the facts that today in one single day we create more data that we've created in the previous 10,000 years before the computer revolution Revolution. And this is basically all that we talk about today. This company is stealing our data. Our data is super valuable. Data, data, data. And basically what he's arguing is that today we're now going into what he calls the age of imagination, where we finally take all of that data that we've collected and we now make it actionable. We can turn it into something useful with the use of that new technology that is artificial intelligence. And if you take a step back, it makes a lot of sense that this is just the next step in the natural evolution of our society. And if you take a look at all of the tools that I've presented to you today, in this video, all of them have the same exact thing in common, which is that they lower the bar of access to anyone who wants to do some creative work. You don't need to have any technical skills anymore. You just need to ask the computer for what you want and you will get some incredibly high quality results. With this new series of tools that are just coming up, we are entering a new age where it doesn't matter what your technical skills are or how talented you are. Basically, the only limit to what you can accomplish is what you can imagine. And this is why we call it the age of imagination. So I've presented a lot of tools to you today. And if you're going to take away one thing from this, I want you guys to basically try out all of these tools and become familiar with them so you can get a step ahead of everyone else in the creative field. But also, even more importantly, if you have kids at home, the best thing you can do for them is to give them an access to these tools. Most of these tools, they cost between five to $20 a month. It's super cheap and it's going to give them such an incredible step ahead in their future life. Personally, I've given mid-journey subscriptions to a few people last Christmas and I was absolutely blown away by the level of excitement and creativity this unlocked in these people who might not have considered themselves to be creative in the first place. So welcome to the age of imagination. My name is Tony Obe. If you enjoyed this video, I recommend that you follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I make a lot more videos about AI and tutorials on how to use these various tools. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.